Hi, in this video we're going to talk about end behavior asymptotes and how you're going to find them if they're not as simple as this uh, example right here, 1 over x. Uh, but to begin, I actually want to focus on this example for a little bit. And I'm going to begin by making a table for the extreme values. So for instance, as x approaches infinity, well we can't plug in infinity for x, but we can plug in some numbers like 100 or 1000 or 10,000. So what happens as we do that? So as I, let's see, start plugging in those values into my table here, all right, we're just going to get 1 over that value, like that. And as you can see, this value is going to approach 0. So that's where we get the idea as x approaches infinity the y value is approaching 0. Now, both ends don't have to approach the same value, but actually in this case they will. So if I try negative 100 or negative 1000 and so on, we would just get the negative values that we saw there. And as you can see, we're still approaching 0, right? I mean, you might see that as negative 0. But that's really the same thing as as 0. So as x approaches negative infinity, y is also approaching 0 in that direction. So that's where we get the idea of this end behavior asymptote. What is the y value approaching as x approaches infinity or negative infinity? So let's take a look at some different types of examples. So our first case, notice that the degree of the numerator is actually less than the degree of the denominator. So if I look at it in this light, that would mean we'd have three different cases. So this is just the first case. If I did the same thing here, and I looked at values like 1,000 and negative 1,000, right? look what actually happens with the arithmetic. I'd have 1,000 over 1,000 squared plus 1. Well, the plus 1 really isn't going to affect things, right, in, in the, the bigger scheme. I'm going to approximate that. Oops, I want that to be the little approximate symbol. To be 1,000 over 1,000 squared, right? Because that plus 1 really isn't going to change that value, especially if we plugged in 10,000 or a million, right? Huge numbers. Really, that's just going to get us 1 over 1,000. Right, so it looks like we're going to approach 0 when we plug in numbers like 1,000. If the number was negative 1,000, it looks like something similar would happen. So here I have negative 1,000. Here I'll have negative 1,000 all being squared plus 1. Again, the plus 1 really isn't going to change anything. This is really just like negative 1,000 over negative 1,000 squared, which is negative 1 over 1,000. Again, that's very, very small. That's approximately 0. So whenever this happens, it's really like we're looking at 1 over x, or maybe even 1 over x squared, right? This is the part of the function that's affecting the end behavior. So if this happens, what's nice is the EBA, or the end behavior asymptote, will always be y equals 0 if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So that was one case. Let's take a look at the next case. What happens if the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator? Well, it's kind of similar, right, because we have these terms here, which Again, when x is a giant number like a million, or negative one million, super small, this x squared and the 2x squared is what's going to matter. Think of that. A million squared plus a million, even though you're adding a million, it really isn't relevant when you have a million squared there. So this is very similar to looking at just the x squared over the 2x squared, which would simplify to 1 over 2. 
that happens to be what the EBA is for this problem. So I'm going to write down a rule here. Whenever the degrees are equal, y is the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator because that's what really matters. All right, That variable is going to, uh, like in this case, x squared over x squared, that's going to cancel out and you're left with a leading coefficient. So we have two cases done, now for our last case. What if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator? All right, this is where we're going to have to do some work. In this case, the EBA will be y equals the quotient of those two functions. So we're actually going to do the division. A little note here, disregard the remainder. So let's try this example. I'm going to divide x squared minus 16 by x minus 3. If you want to use long division, go ahead. Because I'm dividing by a linear um, divisor, I can also use synthetic division here. So I'm going to use 3, since that's what, making, well, that's, that's what makes the denominator 0. And let's see, the coefficients from the numerator would be 1, 0, and negative 16. Let's do our synthetic division. Bring down the 1, multiply 1 and 3, and get 3. Now we're going to add down, so I get 3. And I'll repeat that. 3 times 3 is 9. Add down, I get negative 7. Remember that negative 7 is the remainder, and it says to disregard that. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Disregard it. So here, I get y equals x plus 3. That's the quotient. That's where the EBA of this rational function will be. Now notice, that EBA is a slanted line. We also call that an oblique line, not a horizontal line. And that's okay. Sometimes we're going to get EBAs that are parabolas or even cubic functions. Right? They can be crazy. But remember that all that matters is the ends of those graphs. So for instance, this EBA is a line with a y-intercept at 3 and a slope of 1. What really matters is that the end of the graph, now I'm not really sure if it's above or below the asymptote, but the end of it, when I go out towards infinity, is going to approach that line. And as I go towards negative infinity, is also going to approach that line. That's what matters. So really, this part of the asymptote doesn't really matter in the graph. In fact, there will be graphs that cross the EVA, okay? Because again, it doesn't matter. The only part that matters are the ends. All right, in class, we'll do some more examples, and then in the next video, we're going to put the discontinuities and the end behavior asymptotes together, and we're going to start graphing.